Hi everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the channel. Today we are down here at Revo's Hub for another Driven 24-7 social. So let's go and have a look and see what we've got here on display today. We start off a walk around then really quite far away from the entrance to Revo's because it's all the way over there. Yes, this meet is quite big. Land Rover Discovery, second generation one. We've actually reviewed one of these on the channel earlier last year, actually. Seems like ages and ages ago. Let's have a look around V-Reg. Lovely colour on this one. Huge wheels, perfect for off-roading, naturally. Big knobbly tyres. I like this little cover, though, for the uh, tow ball. That's quite fun. Reverse Hub got their own little car over there. Volkswagen Touran. My Fiat Panda 100 HP. Looking very, very mucky, because, of course, it is that time of year. But we come down it today, nonetheless. I thought I'd give the uh, mini arrest from shows. She'll have plenty of more to uh, go to later on in the year. Very, very low Audi TT. Look at the wheels, though. I quite like those. Forward Focus ST. BMW. BMW Scirocco. Mazda MX-5. I like these. First generation. This looks like it might actually be JDM Market 1, imported. Hopefully it looks like it by the plate. This Mondeo, in case of the fuel power party, belongs to Tom with the Abarth. His dad owns this one. Very regularly comes down to Amber's Meats here and also to our event as well. Also, we've only had one so far. Ford Motor Company of Hellwood. I like that little logo. A very pink wrapped. BMW, is it 3 Series? I think so. Probably an M3 knowing how things go. Very sporty, it's even got a roll cage. M3, that's the one. Certain theme going on with this car. Kind of like it though. It's not usually my thing, I will admit, but yeah, I really do kind of like this one. Just because it is a little bit different. But I also like this even more, much more. My cup of tea, Marlboro branding, E82 Ben on Instagram. All of the branding. And look, it's even got Mr. Bean on it. You can't go wrong with Mr. Bean. Toyota Aris. This belongs to a follower of the channel. Well, technically it's a Corolla, but also known as the Aris here. There's Joseph Lloyd filming. Toyota GT86. Too. Hello. Hello, Mr. Bill. Hello, Vlogception. Friday merchandise again today, sir. Yes, naturally. Excellent. It's always nice to catch up with people here. We'll go over here, shall we? Is that a Supra? Yes, it is. Of course, very well heralded Japanese little sports car, these. And nowadays, the Supra are very much based on the BMW Z something or other, Z3, Z4, I'm not quite sure I need to do some research on that. I'm not too often my BMWs or Toyotas, I will fully admit. But like the GT86, 0 60 about 9 seconds, 8.5 seconds, something like that. Very fun little car, skinny tyres, rear wheel drive, you can't ask for much more regarding fun. Very fancy Mercedes here. Love the badging on those. Also, I just noticed this is actually a Toyota Corolla T-Sport. That's quite fun. How about 500? In fact, there's two of them. One with hella lights. All these covers over them, anyway. And this Nissan Skyline. Not quite sure on the generation of that one. Nissan 350Z. In a very interesting colour scheme. Looks to be a little bit inspired by the Joker, judging by all the branding down the side. <laughs> If it's too loud, then you're too old. Yeah, I suspect this car is probably quite loud. Hunting stupid clowns. <laughs> but yeah, just look at that. I do like that. I like a car that's a little bit of fun like this one. Rather nice collection of motorcycles there. You've got a, I think it's a Triumph Kawasaki. Uh, Yamaha as well. What's the blue one on the end? Let's find out. Indian. That's the one. 
Amber's very own Toyota Starlet. Plenty of videos on this on the Driven 24-7 YouTube channel. Quite a nice little car, this. I think it's actually been lowered as well. Interesting colour choice between the two wheels, I suppose. But yeah, it's wearing that plate that seemed to be extremely well loved on her channel, so she's now transferred that onto the Starlet. We'll come back to the Amis. I want to talk a bit more about those later on. Ford Fiesta ST, 7th generation, technically that's 7.5, 7.5, 8th gen Fiesta STs. You get quite a lot of these at events like this, especially at Revo Hub. They're very popular cars, especially amongst younger drivers who are looking for a little bit of speed. Matt's R53 Mini, supercharged. Plenty of features in there, liking the little touch screen on that as well. Cooper S, obviously. Yeah, we'll just come back to these. I do like the paintwork on this one, actually. It's a very nice shade of blue. Hmm. I wonder what that shade of blue is called. I actually really like that. I also like the blue badge overlay as well. That's quite a nice little feature. But yes, this is Matt's, I guess, latest purchase, though he's had it for a little while now. R53 Cooper S, obviously newer Mini, as you can probably tell by it. He likes Minis, as does Matt on this channel. But then also we've got this, an Autozam AZ1. An Autozam being a subsidiary of Mazda. Their little key car company, Goldwing Doors. Those will never not be cool. It's tiny in there, look at it. It's from Cappuccino. It's even got a five-speed gearbox. <laughs> oh, and air conditioning. Wow, I've never actually seen one of these in person before, so this is quite a treat. Toyota Mr. 2. Joseph's Rover 45 V6. Displaying its engine very, very proudly. Got like a llama or something in the passenger seat today. Stickers obviously advertising various different other YouTube channels. We just have a look around this side as well. Got a Lloyd Vehicle Consulting sticker, but no t-shirt or mug in this today, evidently. MG Car Club Young Members Club as well. I've got a sticker for them. I need to put that in a mini yet. SRL Photography. Previously when he's come to these events, he's had a Renault Clio. It's been a 1.2 TCE, I think it was, or 1.3, one or the two. He's recently upgraded to this Ford Puma ST. Quite nice. I like a car that's got a slightly bold colour. <laughs> this really does appeal. BMW E36, I think it is over there. I'm going to disrupt them, they're having a nice chat about it. Another Fiesta ST. I've only just spotted this, a little Mazda MX-5 hiding away here at the back behind this Volkswagen camper. It's quite funny seeing it in such a raw state. Yeah, gold wheels on this Mazda. Quite close up to the chairs as well. I suspect this is probably a work in progress. They have quite a few of them here at Revo's hub. Glasses here as well. Little Volkswagen Lupo. I do like the Lupo, especially in GTI form. Very fun little cars, very similarly spec to my 100 HP. It's quite interesting actually when you look at these compared to, obviously it's Seat, I guess, sibling. The interior is actually a little bit different despite the fact they share the same dashboard. The VW Lupo has those two little humps as opposed to the Seat, which is just one big unit. And little tidbits of information for you there. But yes, Chevrolet van here really up close. It's a Beauville van apparently. Don't know really much about it at all. Side exit exhaust, leaf spring suspension. Kind of reminds me of the Mystery Machine in the Scooby-Doo movie when you look at it. But I think that might have been a GMC. Anyway, Ford Fiesta z -Tech S. These cars were fairly well everywhere when I was younger. Certainly very much a warm hatch, I think. Not quite hot hatch territory, hence why it was called the z -Tech S, not an ST or something. Or Cosworth, as it probably would have been named at the time, as opposed to ST. Bit of rust bubbling up on the arches there, but it's not too serious at the minute. But then again, how old is this car? No idea because it's got a personal plate, but it's probably about 2001, 2002-ish, you expect a little bit of rust. 
Alex's little Allegro called George. It's his daily driver. I think it's actually his only working car at the minute. He's also got a Morris Minor that he's just purchased and he's currently doing up his channel All Things Alex. Yeah, Morris Marina door handles obviously. No square steering wheel. Bad mark for George there. <laughs> got his hub nut hat in the passenger seat as well. I do like this actually. We saw George last time at the fuel power party. So it's nice to catch up with the car again. Apparently not really been out that, all that much lately, but that's because the weather here has been terrible. And finally, to our boss, you'll certainly recognize this one if you've been a long time viewer of the channel. In fact, look, sticker, which is lovely. But this one here belongs to Amber's mum. So this is her personal Abarth 500 convertible. Very nice looking little car. It's a 595. We've walked around this quite a few times, so I won't spend too long looking around it. But I do like the matte sort of grey black effect on the Competizione spec as well. But yes, Tom's Abarth. Last time I drove it, 182 horsepower, I think, something like that. 180, 190 horsepower within that region. Now we're running about 220, 230. Depends how much boost is on it. Apparently 25 psi. It's currently had a bit of a makeover with it, a new wrap put on. So previously when we looked at the car, it didn't have any orange bits all over the arches or the dark blue. But that kind of works quite well. Obviously golf liveried. Just stepped on a can because I'm clumsy. I like that little logo. Certainly very telling of the car. Not really a lot has changed on the interior of it. But it looks good. If we go around the front, just get a bit of a look there. There we go. Let's say it has changed quite a bit from when I last looked. This is quite different. A little Smart 4.2 known as Bumblebee, this one. 2001 Smart 4.2 Pulse. It's had quite a lot of work done. Obviously, brakes upgraded. It's got a different engine as well. Bulkhead to segregate engine bay a right pain in the ass, apparently, as it says on there. But yeah, really not a lot of space inside of here if you have a look at that. Oh, it's like a Honda rev counter actually from a Type R. Let's have a quick look in there. Is that what's in there? That's basically what it is. So if you leave it on longer, I think it's a Volkswagen Group engine. Certainly turbo. Really made a loud noise when it came in. But it's a bit of a mishmash of cars. This one. Let's say Type R rev counter, Mitsubishi covers on the seat belts, I suppose. As I believe Volkswagen Group engine, it might actually say on the sheet. Let's have a quick look. Just to confirm, yes, there's a 1.8 litre turbo, 20 valve, Golf Mark IV engine crammed into the back of a smart car. And it's got about 190 to 200 brake horsepower, I guess, depending on the place you put it, I suppose, on the rolling road. But if you look at the size of those rear tyres, they are massive. It's basically like a road going go kart, this. I can genuinely imagine that would be quite a lot of fun. Wouldn't mind having a go in a vehicle like this at some point. YouTuber Spectator Sport. Joseph helps Matt get out of a tight parking space. <laughs> and he's away. Goodbye, tiny auto zap. It does look tidy next to the Starbucks. Right, we're back around then to the Citroen Amis. This particular one also bling, blingos, blingos. No. Right then, back to the Citroen Amis. There were three here earlier. Now one has headed off, but that's all right. We've still got two here. This as well as the red Arbath over there, also belongs to Amber's parents, their latest purchase. Now I love these things, I really do. I know they're not everyone's cup of tea, but I really like it. I also like the uh, personal plate they've added down there. <laughs> I do like that. But this has got the, I think it's called the color pack. I might be wrong with that. But it's got basically adds these little orange bits and little vinyl stickers stuff down there. Possibly even the reflectors on the side, they may not be part of that. I don't know. You've also got all these little bits in the dashboard as well. 
top speed on these 28 miles an hour these things are absolutely loved by motoring journalists absolutely everywhere essentially what they could be is the future of transport they are as i as far as i know they are the cheapest ev available on the market as we speak here in 2023 the only downside to them is it's a two-seater which if you've got a family of three or four or even more than that then it's maybe not going to be the answer that you're looking for with a small car but if you live in a city something like this may be the answer to any problems that you may have firstly i think they're brilliant the design on it i really like not so much i guess in the design itself i feel like it you know it's not my thing but um actually in the way that it's been executed i really like the front of the back exactly the same except different colored lamps down here obviously the indicators the doors exactly the same mirrors tiny look like they're from a citroen 2 cv as does the flip up window kind of like a letterbox really but that's the thing with the doors on this because the door is exactly the same either side they only have to produce one mold for it so that reduces cost for you as a buyer basically single wiper as well again keeps it cheaper i don't actually know what that is on the dashboard is that supposed that's a little radio oh of course it doesn't come with a radio does it so they plug that in to the little usb socket that's just down there and then that uh that's their radio for the car i remember doing something very similar with the mini when i first got it before i put a stereo in it not really a lot of boot space just loading space in the footwell we might actually open this up and have a look at it in a minute I think so. Yeah. Uh, yes, they are. Yeah, you can take a look at it. Oh, thank you. I'll show you out. Yeah, what go you've got for to do, it. You've got to turn the ignition on, then turn it on once more time. So turn it on until the lights come on, then turn it again, then put your foot on the brake and press D. It's ready to go. You've got to keep your foot on the accelerator, which is weird, otherwise it won't move. Oh, right. Yeah. Like, it's a bit of some a weird cars one. they creep. Yeah, this yeah. one, don't you? Don't go until you press the accelerator. It's a bit strange. Yeah, you can go for the right look, right? Ooh. An exciting prospect. Have a little go in it as well. you want to go in it? Just going to Amber's parents. Yep, they're finally having a quick look around here. So to get in, just press the little button, open the door. It's incredibly light. So it's plastic. Apparently, it's made out of the same plastic as a portaloo. Let's have a quick look in here. Luggage space just down here. This is obviously the passenger footwell. See bag down there. Plenty of space down there. It's actually quite far away from the front window. This is me sat back. This is roughly where my face is. And look how much visibility you've got. That's crazy. You've also got some extra stuff back here. Looks like you spin it with a screwdriver so I won't touch it too much. There goes Joseph Lloyd in his Rover, which is now up and running again, which is very good. Windows, what do they do? Do they just pop out? Yes. There we go. We figured it out. Easy peasy. It's not easy doing it with my left hand either. Bring that back in. Just drop my sunglasses. You get some little door nets. I don't know whether they're standard. And you get a phone holder as well, which plugs into the USB. Well, not the phone holder, obviously the phone itself. Hazards. Fan. It's a very simple little car, this one. There's Genevieve looking at me and waving. I will say I do like the uh, panoramic sunroof. Very Fiat 500, that I have to say. But yes, this is the interior. Handbrake here, gears just down here. Only sold here in the UK in left hand drive though. So that's a bit of a downside for us Brits, but uh, for anybody else, it may not be such a problem, say France or Italy or something. Yeah, I'm actually about to go and take this car out for a little drive. Maybe if I ask nicely, I can review it properly one day. We shall see. But this is the interior of the ME, and it's the first time for me, and actually I quite like this, I have to be honest. Right, 34 miles of range left. This is quite exciting. It's in park, put it in drive. So is this how it works? Ready, there we go. Turn it on. Let me press the brake. Now it's in drive. Oh, we are away. Oh well. Being told by Genevieve to watch out for the people here. 
Well, this is kind of funky. Watch out for all these people taking photos because they won't hear a tiny little electric Citroen Ami coming. This is fun. I would say let's do a 0-60 test, but it's not going to do it. It feels like I'm in a spaceship and the camera's just fallen over. I do apologise, I don't have any camera mounts with me at the minute. <laughs> it sounds like a little spaceship blurring up. Well, that's quite fun. Well, let's turn around in here, shall we? I have to say, the turning circle on this absolutely amazing. That's got such a great turning circle. So as I mentioned already, top speed of about 28 miles an hour. We're doing 23 and the noise in it is quite immense actually. is with an Ami, everyone just looks at you. It's quite a funky little beast this. Sorry, I know this hasn't really been much of a review. Put it in neutral, manual handbrake on and off. And then, handle's just down there. Funky little beast this. Pardon? Funky little beast this. It is, isn't it? Yeah. So that was a quick spin in the Ami. As I say, hopefully one day I can maybe do a proper review on one of these. I can see the appeal on them. They're really not very quick. I think it'd be quite funny to get the Sinclair C5 next to this when that's up and running. So I think that can maybe be a tiny bit of a fun comparison. Get an old 80s trike, basically, electrically powered trike, obviously, or EV. I don't think this is going to replace many cars in the world. Um, but if you've maybe, say, got a Smart 4.2 or something and you're looking for something new, this might be an ideal replacement, who knows. But yeah, still one more car to look at really, and that's this Escort Mark IV. A very rare car by today's standards, really not many of these left because many of them ended up in the scrapyard. Because obviously they're just daily runners, daily beaters, people ran them into the ground. That's exactly what happens. But this one, bit of a survivor. What year is it? f -reg, so very late 80s with this. Washburn, engine on show for the world to see. Sunroof, extra win. Lovely little dashboard in there. I wonder if this goes to shows quite frequently. Obviously hatchback. The Escort, of course, being replaced by the Ford Focus in the late 90s. But no, a nice little car and a very good turnout here at Revo today for the Driven 24-7 social. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment down below, let us know which is your favourite car here at the show. And of course, if you want to see more car-based content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Here's Genevieve here to say goodbye. Bye. There we go. But yes, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Until then, farewell.